Hey folks, as part of this e-scouting series that I've been doing here on my computer, I thought it'd be helpful if I just gave you the most basic parts of e-scouting and how you can use mapping tools in the most efficient way by focusing on maybe three, yeah, let, let's stick to three basic elements about the daily behaviors of elk. So if you take e-scouting, what it is, and we'll throw up a screenshot here, E-scouting at its most basic element is using maps and technology to focus on where the elk are likely to be on the day that you're hunting them. And to keep it, like I said, to keep it simple, here's how I do it and here are the tools that I use. Elk have three main activities of their day. I try to understand these three basic activities and how the elk are using their landscape on that day that I'm hunting them, regardless of whether it's one of the food seasons of early pre or peak rut, or if it's one of the sanctuary seasons of post rut and late rifle. So let's think about this. During the day of an elk, whether it's from midnight to midnight or daylight through the darkness to the next daylight sunrise, elk have three main activities they're involved in. And my e-scouting is based on these three activities and how elk use their landscape for those activities on the day I'm hunting them. And like I said, this is the same. These three principles are the same whether you're hunting one of the earlier archery seasons of early season pre-rut or peak rut or if you're hunting one of the later rifle seasons of the post-rut or the late season. And here's what the three are. Feed and forage, bedding, and travel. Right? That's all an elk has to focus on in a day. Their mind is, I gotta get some food, I gotta go and find a place to bed, and I'm moving back and forth to those two places. So, you can almost get rid of the third because it's understood that they're gonna be moving to travel from their feed and forage to their bedding areas. But, let's talk about feed and forage. Feed and forage change a lot over the course of a hunting season. So I need to be thinking about what is the forage preference at the time I'm hunting them, that day or that week, and where does that forage best grow? So we know elk are bedding a lot of their day. Okay, they're ruminants, right? They graze, they go in bed, they regurgitate, chew their cud, swallow and digest. That's what a ruminant does. And they do that while they're bedding. So we know that elk prefer to bed on certain slopes of a certain steepness or no more than a certain steepness, and they avoid slopes that are too steep. We know that, all the studies have told us that. We also know that there are times that thermal regulation is going to determine where an elk beds. So sometimes they have to bed on a slope that's shaded, and sometimes to stay warm, they bed on a slope that is more sun exposed. Well, then we've got the third thing, right? They're moving back and forth. We call it travel. Scientists call it locomotion. When elk aren't feeding or they aren't bedded, they're usually traveling to or from their food and water to wherever they're going to bed. So think about any e-scouting you do in the context of three daily activities, because that's gonna define your tactics. It's gonna define kind of where you're setting up. Feed and forage, bedding, travel. So if we know these are the three daily tasks that elk have, we're going to give them priority, these three daily activities, we're going to give that the priority when we e-scout. And that's why when I was working with Go Hunt to come up with this terrain analysis tool, I focused on these three things. What's a tool that would help me take a map? and quickly identify areas or eliminate other areas based on these three basic things that elk do on the landscape. So that's the idea behind this terrain analysis tool that you're gonna see me use in all of these e-scouting videos. It helps me isolate the areas that are most likely to be used for the activities I mentioned. It's going to eliminate a lot of places where it's like, well, they're just not going to use that kind of stuff because of the slope angle, because of the slope orientation, or because of the elevations. Really, really quick way to take these huge units and narrow them down.
terrain analysis tool. That's the tool that I'm looking for. And with these three things in mind, slope angle, slope orientation, and elevation bands, I'm able to eliminate a lot of ground in a hurry. So now I want to walk through some of the stuff you're going to see and what my mind is thinking because there's some basic knowledge we know about elk that I want you to be keeping in mind no matter when, what season, what environment, what landscape you are e-scouting for. Keep some of these things in mind. So when we're talking about food and forage, I'm going to give you some examples of how I use the terrain analysis tool to focus on those areas that are most likely to have what elk are looking for food and forage. So we know that elk prefer the areas where forage grows in the greatest abundant abundance and the greatest quality. These are usually edge areas. So I can use this tool to find those edge areas that are on slopes that face mostly east, northeast, or northwest. And you might be saying, well, what is that? why that? Well, what we know is by late August, the other slopes that face southeast, south, southwest, and maybe even directly west, those are dried out. The hot summer sun of July and August has made those areas really brown, and there's not a lot of good quality forage left. The good quality forage is in the areas where the sun hasn't had a direct hit to the slope. So that's why I'm saying these eastern slopes, yeah, the sun might come up kind of in the east, southeast, but by the time it gets really hot, it's starting to arc where the direct east and northeast slopes are now protected from the sun. And it does its thing, it goes around all the way around, you know, and it's overhead. And so the southeast, the south, the southwest facing slopes, they're really getting hammered. Now, even late in the afternoon, that west face, whew, boy, that's pretty tough. Well, we know that this northwest slope is never going to get direct sun. So it's going to stay greener and it's going to stay more lush. We know this east slope, because it's such a low light angle, it's not going to get hammered by the intensity that the west is, so there's still going to be some good green forage there. The northeast, the same thing. So by the time you get into September, you're looking for places that the sun hasn't, I'll call, torched, right? You, you see it, you walk around and it's like, boy, that's really brown. Now, Maybe you are in places that are canyons or foothills or whatever. The same thing. Those places that have been protected by the direct sun or from the direct sun are the places that are going to hold the forage the longest into season. So when I'm using this tool and I know I'm in a food pattern and I know that most of the south exposure is dried up, all I got to do is take my tool and say, all right, Northwest, northeast, east. These areas are going to have really good feed as long as there's an edge area and it's not all timbered. It's more open areas with grasses and such. I hit the button and poof, right here on my map. All kinds of that pops up. So now look at all of the slopes I've been able to eliminate. So some of you are probably asking, well, I've always heard about north slopes when it's really warm. Yeah, we'll get into that. But for feed, when we're talking about food and forage, in most instances, north slopes are going to be your timbered slopes. And they have very little forage because no sun gets through that canopy to hit the forest floor. But having said that, if you can find a north running slope that has been thinned or is not a really thick canopy, you might be onto something. So the idea is where are these faces that are not going to get direct sun where the forage stays in greater quantity and greater quality later on into our hunting seasons. The other part about migratory elk is that the forage that they need is sometimes at elevation bands. Early in the season, say the first week of September, they're going to be on a certain type of forage compared to late October. 
Well, you might find out by doing your research in your area that, hey, elk prefer this forage, so they're gonna be at this elevation band, and that forage they prefer, you know how you've, you've maybe have read the back of something you're planting in your garden and says, you know, grow in shade or grow in direct sunlight or whatever? These preferred forage types have the same response to sunlight and sun intensity or heat intensity. And direct sunlight, less soil moisture. So some of these places, again, are going to be in spots that maybe don't get as much sun. There's a few of them that, that can take direct sun, but usually by late August, for sure in early September, they're dried out. So if you're looking at it, it could be an elevation band where these, these forage preferences are located. Or like I said earlier, it could be a slope orientation. The terrain analysis tool lets you focus on either of those. So now the second one, and this one is what elk spend most of their daytime hour doing. They're bedded. Most of the time that we are out hunting elk, elk are bedded. So how can we use tools to understand where elk are likely to bed? Well, we can take the studies that tell us elk prefer to bed in a slope less than 20 degrees, preferably less than 15 degrees. And there's been multiple studies that tell us that. So with the terrain analysis tool, we worked on it and we said, all right, Let's allow us to go everything into these increments of 0 to 5, 5 to 15. That's kind of what I'm focusing on. Yeah, if it gets a little steeper than that, elk will still bed there, but they prefer not to. So, by using this tool, a couple clicks, and look how much of the landscape you've eliminated as potential bedding areas. How slick is that? So, you think about with the fact that, okay, they're probably feeding here. That's why we talked about forage first. And we think that based on these slope angles, they're probably bedding over here. The travel part's gonna happen here. Another thing we know is that elk have to bed to thermoregulate. Again, tons of studies tell us that. So think about this. The studies tell us that elk will invest as much energy staying cool in warm weather as they do staying warm in cold weather. So the slope orientation and how it exposes the elk or shades the elk from direct sunlight is a big consideration in where they will bed. So if we know that in September direct sunlight really impacts them, well we're going to be looking at north slopes for bedding areas. Maybe something that faces northeast or something that faces northwest. But we're very seldom going to see them on east, west, south, southeast, southwest because of the requirement of thermoregulation. So we know that. So be thinking about that, right? In your archery seasons, north faces or north, at least to some degree north, are going to protect them from the direct ray of the sun and those are the places you're gonna look for. So on the terrain analysis tool, what do we do? We go click those, Whew. wow. Look at how many places we've just eliminated. So there's the opposite of that where elk thermoregulate in extremely cold periods to try stay warmer. Well, if it's a November late season hunt and it got down to 15 below, you're not gonna to find too many elk over on a north slope bedding. You're probably going to see them bedding on a south, southeast, maybe southwest, maybe west, maybe direct south. Somewhere in that arc is where they're going to bed to take advantage of the direct sunlight that is going to allow them to burn fewer calories. So with the terrain analysis tool, depending on the season I'm on or hunting, I can say, all right, they need shade. Boom, north, northeast, northwest. Okay, it's cold, I go and click, all right, let's look southeast, southwest, west. Those are probably the places they're gonna be then. And look at how much of the terrain I've eliminated. 
And then when I layer that on top with the slope angle, okay, zero to 15 degrees, it's late November, I want something that faces west or southeast. A lot of terrain is eliminated. That's the whole idea behind this. So regardless of the season, we know that elk are traveling from bedding areas to food and water and then going back and doing that. So in the, in the morning, they're usually coming back to the bedding area. In the evening, they're usually leaving the bedding area. So where do you set up? You take your whatever parameters you are choosing for based on your season type. And these three pieces, right? We're talking about slope angle, slope orientation, and elevation bands. And you have it. So that's what you're going to see me doing in this series of videos. Using this terrain analysis tool and applying it to what we know as elk knowledge. And what I've told you here about slope angles they prefer to bet on, aspect ratio or aspect angles like exposure, none of that's rocket science. We've known this stuff for 30 years since they started doing the studies out on the Starkey National Forest or experimental forest. So all of that stuff, just be thinking about it in these three basic levels, right? Where are they gonna feed? Where are they gonna bed? And where do they have to travel to connect those dots? It, it, <laughs> I don't wanna make it any more difficult than that. And use that information, that knowledge you have, and apply it to these tools that help you identify the slope angles that are most appropriate, the slope orientations and exposures, and the elevation bands. It makes e-scouting so much easier, so much more simple. Falls into one of those categories of, where has this been all my life? <laughs> but anyhow, if you're interested, go to gohunt.com, sign up for Explorer. You'll have all of this stuff that you see in these videos. Use promo code Randy, and they'll give you $20 of credit in their gear shop. Now, let's get into e-scouting. We're going to do one e-scouting plan that is for a food pattern, which could be early season, pre-rut, or peak rut. And then we're going to follow that with a full-blown e-scouting plan for one of the sanctuary patterns, which would be the post-rut or the late season. Thanks for watching.